UFO whistleblower David Grush has doubled down on some bombshell claims, maybe the most explosive being that the U.S. government has killed people who tried to go public with stories about non-human spacecraft, telling News Nation's Elizabeth Vargas last night. Let's watch. You recently did an interview with Joe Rogan um, on his podcast, uh, and you said something that really took me aback. You said that you believed that the United States government has killed people for trying to go public with a story. Really? Those are concerns that uh, certain scientists on the program that are known to me, you know, presented that to myself, but I did direct them uh, to the appropriate authorities on that. That's something that I don't know firsthand. That's something they espouse, but because of the serious nature of that, you know, I directed them to the appropriate authorities, such as the Inspector General staff uh, and law enforcement. So uh, I can't speak to that because that's something that they espoused, and I directed them to the right authorities. Other people were worried about that, not you. I had some unique things happen in my personal life that, you know, were some of the causal factors for me to file a complaint, some things that my wife and I had noticed, uh, some intimidation. I can't get into the exact nature. I, I did provide that information to the inspector general, and, and hopefully they referred it to appropriate federal law enforcement and counterintelligence personnel. But I can't uh, discuss that publicly because of the sensitive nature of that for my own protection and for the integrity of the investigation. Yeah, because if, if you really believe that the government has done that in the past with people who have tried to expose this UFO program, Program, why are you still alive? You've done more to expose it than anyone else. Well, that's one of the reasons why I went public, and certainly I was shown that you know they can touch me at any time, and, and that's what led me uh, to not only contact my former agencies, you know, counterintelligence folks, um, with uh, you know what I witnessed, and I provided evidence to that fact, but filed the complaint, and uh, certainly going public was the appropriate move for me for my own protection. Tucker Carlson recently spoke with redacted co-host Clayton Morris, saying he hasn't even told his wife that he's what he's learned on this elusive subject. Let's watch. The second thing that bothers me is the UFO story. And, uh, you know, the more you dig into that and talk to people with knowledge, with actual knowledge of it, again, that's another story where there are some, you know, fanciful ideas floating around that are just, you know, there's no evidence that they're true. But if you talk to people who, you know, have actual knowledge of it that they gathered themselves, there are parts of that story that I do not understand at all that are really, really, really dark. It's so dark that I, you know, haven't told my wife about it. I mean, I, I haven't verified any of this, but this is not just stuff that I read on the internet. I know you all are very, very grounded in that story. So I think I know, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. But there's some stuff there that's just like, man, I, I'm not even sure what that means. There's a spiritual component there that I, I don't fully understand. Um, so yes, that story bothers me. And I think, last thing I'll say, that one of the reasons that we've had all the, these disclosures and all these, what, 10 whistleblowers at this point, and it hasn't really become front page news. Part of it's suppression. You know, parts of the government don't want you to know about it, but part of it is the public can't deal with it. It's too far out. The but some are critical of this particular exchange, saying Morris and Carlson never provide evidence, sources, or a reason for withholding that information. Mm. All right. Uh, so let's maybe go with the Grush, Grush. stuff. Uh, right. So, so Grush is saying that he knows people who felt threatened for trying to come forward with information, or even that people were killed yes. for doing so. And then and Elizabeth Vargas said, okay, but that's not necessarily based on your experience. And then Grush said, well, obviously, he hasn't been killed. He's alive. He's testifying. But he did fear. He had fears for his um, for safety or for some kind of harassment yeah. based on, on what he's doing. But based on what he's experienced, he said, they've shown me they can touch me. They can, right. they, they've shown me that they know how to touch me in my life. Well, he, now, he might be referencing... Um, the fact that there was a lot of negative reporting about him, actually, that The Intercept did. We talked to Ken Klippenstein about it. It was Ken's reporting on um, on his history of, uh, of I think it was Alcohol a abuse substance and, abuse, yeah. that kind of thing. Um, so he, he might mean that they, you know, they tried to delegitimize me. They tried to smear my reputation for speaking up, which is not. Do, do you think the that's same the same? I mean, that's no, I, I don't not at all to minimize the kind of coercive power of doing something like that. And certainly the government has demonstrated the state its— state has tremendous coercive Yes, power. and the, the government has shown its willingness to do that in a million different ways, sending threatening yeah. letters to Martin Luther King, wiretapping him, all that, that sort of thing. So I, do, I, I credit that. 
At the same time, that wasn't exactly the question, right? What, what Vargas was pushing him on is this idea that his life has been threatened and that other people's lives have been threatened to the point of right. actually killing them. Well, who's doing the threatening? And who's doing the killing? And where and, and who is it that has been yeah. apparently killed by the government? That's that's a very yeah. serious charge. I mean, we're we up until this point have been talking about a hunt for potential alien spacecraft and alien bodies. Should this be a manhunt for human beings that have been killed because of knowing too much uh, about the government? I want to know program? what agencies are responsible, and then we need to hold them accountable if it is the case. Or we need to investigate yeah. them and find out it's BS. And he says, you know, I I I pointed to them right. to the proper authorities, but but, uh, but if the, but the authorities exactly. are the ones doing this, you're saying so. What isn't the proper authority? Public sunlight exactly. disinfectant. We need to know. At, at, at some point, you're you're going to be. You're not saying they're already out. From your perspective, your claim, they're already out to get you and your people for having this information. Isn't you, you need to get it out there. Yes, and he says that about himself. Again, when Vargas asks him, well, what about your safety? He says, well, yeah. that's part of why I came forward. So there does seem to be a little bit of a gap if Somebody's between, threatening you, you're not safe. Like, you're, you're not, as long as I satisfy them, you're yeah. already, right. do you know what I mean? So and then further coming compliance forward is, is not, the safety, and he says that about himself. Yeah. My, I came forward just there in that interview. I came forward in part because I felt threatened and I'm, I'm less exposed. And something happens to me now, it would seem suspicious. So why is that good for the goose but not good for the gander? Yeah, that's a fair question. Um, now, going on to the interview, the Tucker Carlson interview, there was a lot of insinuation, a lot of mm -hmm. and raised eyebrows and deep swallows, you know, gulps of, of trepidation. Is it misleading to have those kinds of interviews as a journalist? Well, uh, you know, without more. They, they both basically mm -hmm. said in the clip that we watched, they, they personally have knowledge of more, much like Grush. They personally know more. Is it that Tucker Carlson feels threatened? He says it just feel. He said he characterized it as too out there to talk about. He didn't want to talk to about uh, it to his wife because it was too out there. What does that mean? Yeah, I don't know. I I, I thought perhaps maybe he was just referencing, uh, you know, the the, um, the videos of unidentified aerial objects, um, or maybe he's seen some of them that we have the public's not seen, or that maybe people like his guest have. have Shared with him, but, obviously. I that are that are too much to discuss with your wife. I don't know. Um, like he said, there's a spiritual. He did a spiritual component. component. I don't know. I, I mean, maybe he's seen there, something. Maybe he's seen something. Brilliant. There, there are know. people who think that there's a conflict between the idea that there is a god um, in any kind mm -hmm. of traditional sense and aliens. Uh, what does that do to theological practice if we are not? Mm -hmm. God's only people. Do aliens have a different God? Is our God local? Um, is he really omniscient? These are the kinds of, I think, uh, the theological questions that aliens oh. raise. And I, I don't know if that's what he's alluding to. Well, that depends on what your religion is, maybe. I don't know that it's a conflict with... Um I don't think aliens necessarily conflict with the Catholic perspective, which was the religion in which I was no? raised. I don't think so, because they could just be... Other sentient life could have been created by God as well, or something like that. The, the Bible's just for Catholics. The Bible is a uh, is not is not the like divine word of God. It's just it's kind of like it's it's it inspire it's inspirational stories for lessons. It's not the, it the Pope is the center of the is the is the authority on religious truth. And the, the debates Bible. around things like evolution and dinosaur bones those aren't implicated in Catholicism the way no. they are in some other religions. No. Interesting. All right. Well, let us know what you think about this one. How are you reading that Tucker Carlson interview and some of the insinuations? And what do you think is really holding Grush back? We want to know. And do you support my plan to just figure out where the facility is, <laughs> where the, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do a January 6th on that facility <laughs> that's hiding the alien craft. We're going to we're going to march. We're going to take back our country with strength. <laughs> OK, Ravi. Tomorrow on Rising, we'll have all the hottest takes on the most important news stories of the day. Be sure to like, share and subscribe. Subscribe so you never miss any content. And for those of you who like to listen while you're on the go, we are now available anywhere you listen to podcasts. See you later. Bye-bye.